the Ankh-Morpork City Watch is the police force of the fictional city of Ankh-Morpork in the Discworld series by the English writer Terry Pratchett. The series comprises eight fantasy novels and one short story centered on the adventures of the City Watch and its commander Sam Vimes, in order of publication they are. Guards. Guards. Theater of Cruelty, Men at Arms, Feet of Clay, Jingo, The Fifth Elephant, Night Watch, Thud, and Snuff. The watch is also to be the subject of a police procedural television series in development as of 2013, entitled The Watch. Style, Pratchett's watch has been described as part of a long-standing fantasy tradition where the characters of the city watch would rush in and die, or run away with Pratchett's approach to that tradition ranging from parody in the earlier novels to deeper satire in the later ones. Fictional History Note: Some of the information repeated below was taken from the Discworld Companion in the 1999 Discworld Diary, which had a City Watch theme, and has not been confirmed in any of the Discworld novels. The Ankhmore Pork Watch and Ward was founded in AM 1561 by King Beltrick I. They had full copper armor and a copper shield inscribed fabric ATDM, PVNCTIAGVNT Celerita. Four days later Beltric's son assassinated him, and became Beltric too. Since he had little interest in maintaining a police force, the equipment of the watch quickly deteriorated. At this time there were four separate forces, the Palace Guard, who guarded the palace. The Cable Street Particulars, a political police force concentrating on discovering plots against the current rulers of the city. The name may have been inspired by the Baker Street Irregulars from the stories of Sherlock Holmes, and perhaps by the Battle of Cable Street, a riot started between Oswald Mosley's British Union of Fascists and Anti-Fascist Protesters in 1936. They are also known as the Unmentionables, possibly a parody of the Invincibles, an Irish extremist nationalist group, or of the Untouchables, a Prohibition-era law enforcement group, who served as government intelligence. The Ward, who acted as gate guards, thief-takers etc. during the day. The Watch, who served the same purpose in the hours of darkness. The force comprised one commander, five captains, ten sergeants, forty corporals, lance corporals, constables and lance constables, and, in times of emergency, a citizen's militia of varied size. Public opinion of the watchers was never high, and reached an all-time low when a commander, who had told the public not to take the law into their own hands, was thrown onto the ankh with a cry of if it's not in our hands, whose hands is it in? The guilds were policing themselves by this point, so the watch was becoming increasingly irrelevant. The watch had a brief respite in AM 1688, Following the Ankh-Morpork Civil War, when Commander Suffer Not Injustice Fims and his Iron Heads became the city's rulers. However, after he was deposed in favor of the patricianship, the watch sank even further into obscurity. He was the last watch commander. Under the rule of the patricians, not only did guild law apply in the guilds, but the only laws that applied anywhere else were the whims of the man in charge. By the time of homicidal Lord Winder's rule as patrician, there were only a handful of watch houses remaining. The Cable Street particulars were thriving, however, having changed from an intelligence agency into a secret police force, employing torture with gusto. During the glorious revolution of 25 May, their building was burnt down by members of the Night Watch from Treacle Mine Road. The change in patricians did not lead to an improvement in perceptions of the watch, and when Lord Vitier Neri replaced Mad Lord Snapcase, and even theft was legalized, there seemed to be no point to them at all. The dysfunctional night watch now comprised three men, based in the old Treacle Mine Road watch house. While the day watch had become another of the city's gangs, the night watch was just inactive. History according to plot of novels, this changed when Constable Carrot Iron Founderson joined, and the night watch saved the city from a dragon. Following the destruction of their watch house, they moved to larger premises in Pseudopolis Yard and started recruiting more members, especially from ethnic minorities such as dwarfs, trolls and the undead. The Watch has even admitted a vampire. When they saved the patrician's life Batir Neri agreed to increase the force's stature, with new section houses being built around the city. The remains of the Day Watch were incorporated into a new city watch, 
commanded by Sam Vimes. Since then, the watch has become a proper police force, dealing in crime prevention and investigation, rather than simple thief taking. They now have a forensic section, a traffic division and the long gone Cable Street particulars have been replaced by a plain clothes division. A watch academy has been set up, although watchmen trained there often get poached by other still plain city states who have seen the advantages such a force has. Bims tolerates this, because it is useful that coppers all over the plains have been trained to obey him. Another recent addition are the specials, based on the watch's ancient right to establish a citizen's militia as needed. Known members include the librarian, Mr. Boggis of the Thieves Guild, Sam Vimes Butler Willikins, and a Klax operative named Andy Two Swords Hancock who carries a disturbing amount of weaponry. The watch's current motto is Fabricate DM. PVNC, as inscribed on the old Treacle Mine Road watch house. Presumably the last part of the original fabricated DM, PVNC TIA GVNT Celerita had been lost. This is nonsense in Latin, and doesn't actually mean make my day, punk, although it looks as though it ought to. This is the nature of most latation in the books, and is not unusual. Fred Colon insists it means to protect and serve. Interestingly, the motto of the Vims family is Protego e Servio, or I protect and serve. More and more watchmen trained by the City Watch prefer to work in other cities abroad where they can earn good money thanks to their outstanding qualification and ethics. They are referred to as Sammies and communicate with each other by telegraph, a reference to real world Interpol. Members, the primary members of the Ankh-Morpork City Watch are equals Commander Sir Samuel Vims equals Samuel Vims is the commander of the City Watch, it is all he has ever known and he now brings the dirty tricks he learned as a street copper to his new role. He also makes sure to pass these tricks of the trade on to new recruits. Under Sam Vims, the Watch has strengthened its position, making many enemies. In his time in the Watch he has married the richest woman in Ankh-Morpork, Lady Sybil, and had a son with her, young Sam. Equals Captain Carrot Iron Founderson equals Adopted by dwarfs as an infant after the deaths of his human parents, Carrot grew up down in the mines of the Copperhead Mountains. He is six feet tall and nearly as broad across the shoulders. His dwarfish name is KZAD Bat, which, roughly translated, means headbanger, a logical nickname for a six foot six inch tall man living in a mine built by four foot tall dwarfs. He was quite surprised the day he was informed that he was human. His adoptive father thought that he ought to go and live amongst humans, and found him a job with the Ankh-Morpork Night Watch under the misapprehension that they were respected and respectable. Carrot was barely sixteen years old at this time. Carrot joined the Night Watch while it was only a small group of misfits who ran from evildoers rather than arrest them. He had difficulty with this attitude, as his old-fashioned view of justice led him to arrest the leader of the entirely legal thieves' guild on his first day. He since has learned to understand the city a bit better. The city learned about him as quickly when he won in a fight against every miscreant in the Mended Drum Tavern, including the then doorman Detritus the Troll. Captain Carrot has made quite a name for himself, rapidly and effortlessly coming to know all of the city's one million population by name and tax papers. He is big on paperwork and organization and always takes time to see all sides of a story before getting involved. When Sam Vims planned to retire after his marriage to Lady Sybil Ramkin, Carrot was named his successor. He is not particularly skilled in comma placement and has a bit of trouble with the whole concept of I before E. He is considered the disc's most linear thinker. For instance, as part of a murder investigation, he interviews death. Carrot is also famous enough that there are action figures of him available. Carrot's main talents are his genuine interest in and liking for people and his charisma and supernatural likability. He is often shown to be able to get people to do things no one else could force them to do, simply by assuming that they will. For example, he is great success in his outreach programs to at-risk Ankh-Morpokian youth by treating them like Boy Scouts. When he directly commands someone, they find it supremely difficult to disobey. However, he prefers not to utilize this extreme of his power except in dire emergencies. Carrot is often thought of as non-threatening, 
which is a dangerous conclusion if you are the unlucky person who disappoints his honest nature. People think of carrot as being simple. However, their mistake is in confusing simple with stupid. Carrot's simplicity is his cunning. In soul music, carrot adds supplementary questions to the quiz machine in the mended drum, asking players who was responsible for recent crimes and frequently making arrest as a result. Carrot often sees the bright side of life. When Angua, a werewolf, tells him that her brother Andre is stuck in wolf form and is forced to live as a champion sheepdog, Carrot notes that at least he's a champion. Carrot has also promised Angua that, should she ever follow in her brother Wolfgang's murderous footsteps, he will be the one to stop her. While it is common knowledge that Carrot is the true heir to the throne of Angmorpork, he doesn't acknowledge it, and has even hidden evidence of his royal heritage. The patrician, Havelock Vatir Neri, considers him useful for this reason as well as others, as it means that any attempt to start a revolution under the claim of being true heir is impossible, and that if anyone complains that only a king has the authority to do something he does, he can simply refer to Carrot. Carrot himself never uses his royal powers or acknowledges his royal heritage. After having learned about it, he confides in Vatir Nero that he wants the people to obey the law because it's the law, not because Captain Carrot is good at being obeyed, and that he is content with his job of ringing a bell and yelling that all's well provided of course that all is well. Carrot does, however on rare occasions, hint at his royal powers to make things happen. In Jingo, Lord Vatir Nero gives Sam Bims the title of Duke, something only a king can do, while Carrot is present a Euro Vatir Neri goes so far as to say that he had been reminded that Vims could have that title. In The Fifth Elephant, when faced with the defection of most members of the watch under Sergeant Fred Colon Carrot puts his royal sword on a desk in plain sight and reminds watch members that they had taken an oath to the king, and that the king had not relieved them of it. Carrot is a stereotypical perfect policeman. Totally honest, law-abiding and determined to be friends with everyone. People of all species can't help wanting to behave well in his presence. He has an attitude of loving everyone. His philosophy of love for everyone has caused distress for Angua. She worries that his love toward her is equal to that he gives everyone else and not special. While he would place the welfare of the public above hers, when she was in danger he traveled to the rim of the disc to save her. Carrot's attitude towards his relationship is considered particularly unusual. During Jingo, Angua is kidnapped on a Clochian ship and the watch pursues them. Carrot does not stand at the front of the ship fraught with worry but, sensibly, gets some sleep so he will be ready to rescue her when they catch up. Although Sam Bims and the ship's captain see the sense of this, they can't believe that someone in love could be so sensible. In the art of Discworld Pratchett says that Carrot has a bright future ahead of him, should Lord Vatir Neri not survive the next assassination attempt. He also notes that, although most people envision Carrot as Arnold Schwarzenegger, he is actually modeled after Liam Neeson. In both the Discworld computer game and the BBC radio production of Guards. Guards. He speaks with a Welsh accent. His character is also reminiscent of Constable Benton Fraser from Due South. Equals Captain Angua von Arabowald equals, Captain Delphine Angua von Arabowald first appeared in Men at Arms. Angua is a member of the Ankh-Morpork City Watch, originally hired as part of an affirmative action plan by Havelock Vatir Neri. Her physical beauty led co-workers to predict that criminals would be lining up to be arrested by her, but Angua's surprising strength and tough attitude soon made her one of the most feared officers on the watch. In the 1999 computer game Discworld Noir, and the 2001 books on tape version of Men at Arms, her name is pronounced and you are with a hard G. Terry Pratchett writes on the terrypratchettbooks.com forum, it's ang as in anger, you as in you, as in a thing. Angua comes from a family of werewolves. She is the daughter of a baron and baroness of Aberwald, and has two brothers, Wolfgang and Andre. Her sister, Elsa, is deceased, killed by Wolfgang, who disguised it as an accident. Both Andre and Elsa were Yanorks, Werewolves that are stuck in one form. Angua and Wolfgang are the only children in their family with shape shifting ability, known as B morphs. Wolfgang is extremely violent and enjoys killing, even eating, 
inferior humans. Angua, preferring vegetarianism, rebels against the traditional werewolf lifestyle of her parents and brother and leaves Alba World. Andre manages to slip away as well and enjoys a career as a talented sheep herder. After moving to Ankh-Morpork, Angua soon became the first woman to join the ranks of the City Watch. She met Corporal Carrot Iram Fanderson in the Watch, and the two soon fell in love. Since recovering from his initial surprise, Carrot has not seemed bothered by the fact that Angua is a werewolf. However, Angua often worries that their different backgrounds and needs will eventually doom the relationship. One of Angua's closest friends in the Watch is Cheery Little Bottom the Dwarf. In Feet of Clay, Angua helps encourage Cheery to come out as a woman, even lending her dresses and makeup. At the same time, Angua conceals her true nature as a werewolf from Cheery because she knows her new friend hates and fears werewolves. Throughout the book Angua debates with herself over whether it would be best to just return to Aberwald and live among other werewolves. In the end, she decides to stay in Ankh-Morpork. Angua has also made friends with Gaspode, a matty, hairy canine who gained and lost the talent of human speech in moving pictures. He then regains it by the time of Men at Arms by sleeping too near the Unseen University's High Energy Magic Building. Gaspode flirts with Angua constantly and has helped her out on missions many times. In The Fifth Elephant, Watch Commander Sam Vims is sent to Alberwald on a diplomatic mission. Lord Vitir Neri chooses Angua to be a member of the Watch team that will accompany him, but Angua has already left for Alberwald on business of her own. Carrot, assisted by Gaspode the dog, sets out after her. This is the first Discworld book to reveal much about Angua's background and her parents and brother Wolfgang all figure in the story. Angua's relationship with actual wolves also provides much tension. Wolfgang plays a significant role as the leader of a violent werewolf movement in Alberwald. Ultimately, Bims kills Wolfgang in a violent confrontation in the city square. Angua is gratified to hear this, as Wolfgang threatened her and anything she cared for while he remained alive. The fact that the Watch now has a werewolf has become common knowledge throughout Ankh-Morpork, but that hasn't affected Angua's privacy substantially, as, for obvious reasons, it is generally assumed to be Nobby Knobs. Carrot, Bims, Vitir Neri and Angua herself all play along, mostly rather amused. However, in the truth, it is revealed in passing that several members of the Ankh-Morpork aristocracy, as well as the lawyer Mr. Slant, are well aware of her nature and in making money, Moist von Lipwig also figures this out upon seeing Angua in her werewolf form with Nobby standing beside her and recognizing her hair. Though the widespread recognition of the werewolf presence in the watch has not inconvenienced Angua on a human level, it has led to a growing sophistication within the city's criminal underworld in evading capture. The first recorded use of a scent bomb is by Kasa, at the beginning of Night Watch, when he killed Sergeant Strumjanthim. Several references to scent bombs have been made since, most notably their usage by William de Word in The Truth. Angua assists Vims in another diplomatic mission in Monstrous Regiment, and is mentioned in Going Postal as being difficult for criminals in Ankhmore Pork to avoid. Angua also appears in a supporting role in Thud, where she gains a rival in the form of the Watcher's first vampire officer, Sally. Angua is an extremely practical and level headed person. While not as cynical as Commander Sam Vims, she balances out Carrot's Norvi to copyright. In human form, Angua is a strict vegetarian. In wolf form, she has a tendency to go after chickens, but she is always careful to go back and slip some money under the door the next day. Though she is deeply committed to Carrot, even likening herself to being his dog it hasn't stopped others with romantic interest. There is tension with a wolf named Gavin in The Fifth Elephant, and she receives a marriage proposal from the small mud Mr. Fosspot in Making Money. In the events of I Shall Wear Midnight it is noted that Angua has been newly promoted to captain. Captain Carrot arrests Tiffany aching after a disturbance in the King's Head involving the Knack Mac Fiegels, who are defeated by We Mad Arthur, another Fiegel. We Mad Arthur has now joined the Watch and he tells Tiffany that she shall be escorted by his colleague, Captain Angua. Subsequent novels also refer to her by this rank. 
In the 2010 Sky Television adaptation of Going Postal, Angua was played by Ingrid Bolsabirdal. The Cretaceous gymnosperm species Chekanowskia angui is named after Angua. Equals Sergeant Fred Colon equals, Frederick Fred Colon is a sergeant, and appears to have been so for a long time. May have been first mentioned in The Color of Magic as a sergeant of the watch, who enters the then broken drum. He is described on several occasions as one of nature's sergeants. He is overweight, preferring to avoid trouble and exertion, and rather unimaginative. When not on desk duty, he generally guards bridges or large buildings against theft. He was a corporal in the watch at the time Sam Bims first joined, and subsequent to this spent some time in the army, before returning to the watch. In The Fifth Elephant, Colon became the head of the traffic squad, which also included his best friend Nobby Nobbs. This role perfectly fit the above-described qualities, especially as the traffic squad is self-financing. A brief promotion to acting captain proved a disaster as everyone, including Colon himself, expected. He is currently holding dual position of custody officer and watch liaison officer. Jobs so vague that no one is entirely sure what they entail, least of all Colon himself. They serve the dual purpose of preventing his brain from becoming overburdened with responsibility and avoiding the catastrophic possibility that he might be given a task of any real importance. His office, in a separate building from the main watch house, is frequented by old acquaintances who want somewhere quiet to get away from the wife, hear what's happening on the street and a euro in Vimes words a euro gossip like washerwomen. For this free-flowing source of information, Vimes considers the cost of donuts on an expense voucher a very favorable trade. Closer examination, though, shows that Colon has some hidden depths. As Vimes thought it, most of the other watch officers saw a fat, stupid, lazy, cowardly man and that was mostly what was there, but Colon and Nobby have a street-level knowledge of Ankhmore Pork on a par with Vimes and are good at sensing tension in a crowd. Both are also survivors of the glorious May 25th when, as described in Night Watch, in the aftermath of a coup an assortment of regular police and hangers-on took out, at some cost, the hardline remnants of the outgoing regime's secret police. Colon also performs his duties in Thud. Fairly well. He is an amiable jailer, and bright enough to keep the keys in a closed tin box in the bottom drawer of his desk, well out of reach of anything an inmate would be able to use. He is often portrayed as being prejudiced against minority, even in the watch, such as dwarves, undead, foreigners, or even women. However, his prejudice is so non specific and naive that nobody takes it seriously. He is possibly related to Sergeant Dop Helpunkt, one half of the town watch and Bad Blintz, Alberwald, seen in the amazing Morris and his educated rodents. Other Discworld characters with a notable similarity to Colon include a member of the guard in the Alberwald town of Bonk and one of the market guards in Alkali, Klotch. Like the various Dibblers, this may be due to morphic resonance. Colon is married, though his wife works during the day. Since he works at night, the two seldom see each other and instead communicate by leaving notes. Bims even goes as far as to privately attribute the longevity of Fred's marriage to this fact. In Guards Guards It is noted they have a number of children, a fact which Bims puts down to persuasive handwriting. Colon made a brief appearance in the Cosgrove Hall adaptation of Soul Music. In the BBC Radio 4 adaptation of Guards Guards. He was voiced by Stephen Thorne. In the 1988 stage play he was played by Roger Bingham. In the Radio 4 adaptation of Night Watch he was voiced by Sam Dale. Equals Corporal Nobby Nobbs equals, Cecil Wormsborough St. John Nobby Nobbs is untidy, smelly, and despite being human, about the same height as a dwarf. He therefore carries a certificate signed by the patrician to prove that, on the testimony of his parents, and the midwife who delivered him, he is a human being. The text of this note can be read in feet of clay and states that on the balance of probability, he is a human being. A running joke is the inability of others to believe this, dispity a euro, or even because off a euro the evidence. In fact, in Hog Fatter, even Death himself was unable to discern Nobby's species. According to the blurb of Men at Arms, 
Nobby was disqualified from the human race for shoving. He always seems to have a cigarette butt about him, normally stowed behind his ear. Samuel Vimes is Nobby's commanding officer, and Sergeant Fred Colon his partner and longtime friend. Together, Nobby and Colon have managed to have many strangely philosophical conversations, including one on whether death has a first name, or even any friends to call him it. Oddly enough, these conversations hint at Nobby being more intelligent than Colon, with Nobby continually pointing out fatal flaws in Colon's statements and arguments, and Colon mentally scrambling to come up with an answer. Nobby is fond of folk dancing. As a child he was a street urchin and a major source of information for various city notables. His father was abusive, and broke his leg at least once. The young Nobby sometimes refers to his father as number one suspect, and is afraid of going to prison because his father is currently in there. He was apparently inspired to join the watch after meeting with Sergeant at Arms John Keel, who once gave him a spoon. Nobby was once thought to be the Earl of Ankh, but it was all a charade to make him king as he would be easier to manipulate than the real heir in the form of Captain Carrot. Nobby proved less tractable than the conspirators had expected, turning down a cushy life as figurehead ruler of Ankh or Pork largely, by his own account, for fear of what Vims would have to sell Euro, or more importantly, Do Euro, when he found out given his and his infamous ancestors' opinions on royalty. It was also due to his family's long-standing belief that they should never volunteer for anything as there is always going to be a catch. Indeed, he fled the offer at a dead run, all the time terrified Vims would go spare. However, at the end of the book Feet of Clay, it is also suggested that he may be a real nobleman, due to the amount of family heirlooms he has not mentioned to any other person. On the other hand, the Nobses have stolen so much stuff over the years that, as Vims has said, you could probably prove Nobby was the Dowager Duchess of Quirm. Nobby played a role in the resolution of the war between Ankhmore Pork and the Empire of Clotch in Jingo, and in recognition the patrician gave him a new job in traffic control. He has since been promoted to assistant to the watch liaison officer, a job vague enough to ensure he never has to do anything actually important. Ironically it is also Nobby who ends the war between the dwarves and the trolls. In Thud it is revealed that the Battle of Coombe Valley, the main reason for the continuing hatred between those two races, was not supposed to be a war at all but a chance for the kings of each side to discuss peace. This information is contained in an ancient artifact called a cube. Nobby, who has been set up as a petty thief from the start, finds and steals the cube at some point in the book, although we do not find this out until Vims tells him to hand it over. Vims works out how to make the cube play its message, in the presence of the current king of the dwarves, and the truth of Coombe Valley is heard for the first time in hundreds of years. He believes he is in a romantic relationship with Verity Hammerhead Pushprom, a girl who runs a fish stall and gets her nickname from the fact that her eyes appear to be looking in opposite directions. However, this relationship seems to consist solely of her hitting him with a fish and telling him to bugger off. He remains faithful to her, however, in all books except Thud, in which he is temporarily in a relationship with exotic dancer Tornary. As of the events of Snuff, he appears to be in a romantic relationship with Shine of the Rainbow, a goblin girl, and it is tacitly suggested that Nobby may have some goblin in his ancestry, explaining why nobody could be sure of his humanity. This relationship is confirmed in Raising Steam, when Colon refers to Nobby being practically married, in reference to his own marital arguments with Mrs. Colon. He is possibly related to Corporal Not one half of the town watch and bad blints, Alberwald, seen in the amazing Morris and his educated rodents. Other Discworld characters with a notable similarity to Nobby include a member of the guard in the Alberwald town of Bonk, who was nicknamed Nobsky by Vims, and one of the market guards in Alkali, Klotch. Like the various Dibblers, this may be due to morphic resonance. Despite this, being related to Nobby is not seen as a good thing in Ankh-Morpork. One of the unseen university Bidlows who, by sheer coincidence, shared the same last name as Nobby was incredibly swift to denounce any potential ties of family. According to the Pratchett portfolio, his typical saying is Tis a lie sir, I never done it, he has not actually been recorded saying it. 
During Nobby's time in Clutch he got in touch with his feminine side, and is quite fond of wearing women's clothing. This can occasionally be useful, as he dressed up as an old lady as part of a traffic scam before being stopped by Vims. Nobby made a brief appearance in the Cosgrove Hall adaptation of Soul Music. In the BBC Radio 4 adaptation of Guards. Guards. He was voiced by Melvin Hayes. In the 1988 stage of play he was played by David Brett, formerly of the Flying Pickets. Nobby has also appeared in two computer adventure games, Discworld and Discworld Noir. In both cases Nobby had a distinct Irish accent. In the 2006 TV adaptation of Hogfatter he was played by Nicholas Tennant. Equals Sergeant Detritus equals, see Trolls. Equals Sergeant Cheery Littlebottom equals, see Dwarfs. Equals Constable Reginald Shoe equals, see, and Ed. Equals Lance Constable Salasis Sally Von Hunting equals, see Undead. Equals Constable D.O.R.F.L. equals, C. Gollums. Equals Constable Visit the Infidel Ungodly with Explanatory Pamphlets equals, Visit the Infidel with Explanatory Pamphlets is a constable of the City Watch. He is generally just called Constable Visit, or occasionally by his nickname Washpot. The term comes from one of Visit's favorite quotations, Moab is my washpot. Over Edom will I cast out my shoe, from Psalm 60 in the Book of Om. His name is, apparently, shorter in Omnian. He first appeared in Feet of Clay. He is referred to by Pratchett as follows, there's one in every station, and Constable Visit was enough for two. Samuel Vim says he is a good copper, his highest form of personal praise. He is an Omnian of a gentle but determined proselytizing nature. He can clear a large crowd in seconds just by talking to them about religion and threatening them with pamphlets, principally unadorned facts and battle call. In off-duty moments he goes door to door with his fellow Omnian, smite the unbeliever with cunning arguments. Entire pubs have been known to draw the curtains, turn off the lights and lie on the floor whimpering at news of his coming down the street. The only entity not afraid of visits endless proselytizing is his friend and fellow constable D.O.R.F.L., a golem with endless patience and a desire to argue faith rationally. He appears in the Sky One television adaptation of Hogfatter, portrayed by Richard Katz. Equals Inspector A. E. Pessimal equals, A. E. Pessimal was first the government inspector of the watch assigned by Lord Vitir Neri to inspect the watch and judge whether the watch gave fair value for the civic funds it used and to inspect the unseen university in a collegiate casting out of devilish devices. He is described as a neat little man, with very shiny shoes, and has no friends and no sense of humor. He does not have a first name, as others would understand. He was initialed at birth rather than named. He was in a position to seriously inconvenience Vims with difficult questions such as Why is CWSTJ? Nobby Nobs in the watch? Are you aware you employ a petty criminal? Eventually, Vims decides to shake the man up, and swore him in as a special constable for the duration of an impending street fight of roughly a thousand trolls and dwarves. Vims thought he could scare the man while showing him what it was like to be a copper. Instead, A.E. took his position seriously, to the point of barehandedly attacking and trying to bite a troll who took a swing at Vims. This action remains one of the few events to have totally shocked Fitir Neri, when he heard about it in Vime's report. A short while later, A.E. came to Vime's office and was offered the position of Lance Constable and Adjutant, with an estimate that he could be a sergeant in a year. Vime's reason for taking A.E. on was A.E.'s patience and intelligence. Vimes needed someone who could look through paperwork and understand what was being said by sifting out important or suspicious facts. Vim's reasons that A.E. always wanted to be a watchman and was stopped by his weak stature. As a condition of his employment, A.E. was told that he would go on patrol twice a week, so he would be able to learn what's important. A.E. is also one of the few people Vim's allows to call him Mr. Vim's, saying that the man earned it all in one go. Along with Vim's disorganizer Mark V, it would seem that A.E. is the start to a new department in the City Watch. By the events of Snuff, A.E. has risen to the newly minted rank of inspector in the City Watch, and his forensic accounting has become legendary and feared throughout Ankh-Morpork, 
as people fear what he may uncover in their financial records. Equals Constable Igor equals, Igor is an eager who was considered too modern for Alberwald by his family, and went with Samuel Vims to Ankhmorpork. He specializes in genetic experiments, which, on the disc world, involves really small stitches. His creations include a pet rabbit called Eerie, a particularly suitable name as he grows spare human ears on it. Another early experiment was breeding noses, which act as independent life forms until sewn on. He also experimented with swimming potatoes in the hopes of breeding instant fish and chips. As with all Igors, Constable Igor is highly talented at performing transplant surgery. He has a speech impediment in that he sometimes forgets to lisp. Vims employs him because of his surgery methods, which Vims considered to be considerably more advanced than most of Ankhmor Pork's doctors. Igor first appeared in the novel The Fifth Elephant. Equals Constable Downspout equals, Constable Downspout, who first appears in Feet of Clay, is a surveillance expert for the watch. Being a gargoyle, he is capable of remaining motionless in one spot and watching for days at a time, a world champion at not moving as Vims once put it. He has no use for money and instead receives his salary in pigeons, which he eats. Equals Corporal Buggy Swires equals, a gnome. Introduced in Jingo, Buggy possesses the hard-nosed, bellicose personality typical of his species, proving able to shout down uncooperative witnesses despite being only six inches tall. He has since established himself as the sole member of the Watch's airborne section through his ability to tame various species of bird to act as transport, for reconnaissance and messaging purposes. He recently discovered that he is an Ak Mac Fiegel and not the child of shoemaking gnomes, as he had been led to believe. He appears to have the same strength as a normally sized human, compressed into a gnome's body. As a result, being headbutted by buggy is like being hit with a steam-powered toffee hammer. Equals minor watchman equals. Special Constable Andy Two Swords Hancock, mentioned only in Thud. Andy Hancock is one of the specials, a group of militia men trained by Sergeant Colon. He is described as being an amiable man with an amiable smile. He fights with two curved Agatian swords and nunchaku, which he calls Agatian num nuts. He is probably either an extremely competent fighter, or just a wild ninja wannabe. It is stated that he destroyed three practice dummies in 30 minutes. When not practicing, Hancock works for the Grand Trunk Clax Company, supplying the watch with information. Sergeant Strunjinthim, Dwarf Desk Sergeant, appearing in the fifth elephant and killed just prior to the beginning of Night Watch by the serial killer known as Kasadun. Acting Constable Cuddy, introduced in Men at Arms. The first dwarf recruit who put aside his differences with trolls and became a good friend to Detritus. Killed by Dr. Cruces towards the end of the story. There are overt hints that Carrot may have buried the gone of the story, as well as the book containing the royal lineage, in Cuddy's coffin to keep it safe. He also created the special cooling helmet for Detritus. Constables Flint and Moraine, two troll watchmen. Introduced in Men at Arms but only have very minor roles. They were the first two non-watchmen sworn in into the Carrots citizens militia by Detritus, using a special troll oath. It is unclear however if these two trolls bear any resemblance to the two trolls, Flint and Mori, in moving pictures. Flint was briefly elevated to sergeant under the tenure of acting Captain Fred Colon, much to the annoyance of Nobby Nobbs, who had been obviously gunning for the promotion himself. Lance Constable Blue John, the watch's largest troll officer, Blue John is a gentle and retiring troll. He is so big that he is used as the riot shield for the rest of the watch officers and he is often used during crowd control. This is because, wherever he is sent, he is the crowd. His name is taken from a type of fluorite found in Derbyshire, England. Corporal Ping, introduced in The Fifth Elephant, he has a knack for saying the wrong thing at the wrong time. In the midst of a murder investigation, he takes a moment to inform Commander Sir Samuel Vimps that Ping is a dialect word, meaning water meadow. He also appears in Night Watch. Andre, a plainclothes watchman of the reformed Cable Street particulars, working in the Ankhmore Pork Opera House during Masquerade. Has not been seen or mentioned since, 
except indirectly in Feet of Clay, when Carrot writes to his parents that there are now secret policemen. Constable We Mad Arthur, sworn in by Fred Colon during the events of Feet of Clay. He was made a special watchman for that night. His species is never explicitly stated before the novel, I Shall Wear Midnight, though Detritus refers to him as a gay gnome. During a fight in the King's Head, in I Shall Wear Midnight, he fights off about thirty members of the Fiegel clan from the Chalk, before returning to the Chalk to discover that he is, in fact, a Fiegel foundling who was raised by gnomes, much in the same way Carrot was raised by dwarves. He is noted to, like Buggy Swires, have human strength in a six-inch body. After returning from leave in the chalk, he was instrumental in uncovering the enslavement of goblins, exercising the use of his newly learned crow's tep technique from his time with the chalk knack Mac Fiegel clan. The Librarian The Librarian of the Unseen University is a sentient orangutan who is one of the Discworld's most frequently recurring characters. Given a badge during the events of Guards. Guards. He refuses to give the badge back. As a special constable, he continues to help out the Watch from time to time, such as giving Vims the Book of General Tacticus in Jingo and helping keep a barricade between writing dwarfs and trolls in Thud. Sergeant Kipper Haddock. Haddock first appeared in Thud. Assisting Corporal Nobs in stopping a fight between a dwarf watchman and a troll watchman. The only description of him in this appearance was that he was definitely human, as opposed to the probably human knobs. He is known by the nickname Kipper by his fellow watchman, and Sam Vims is comfortable enough with him to openly use the name. He later accompanied Commander Vims on his trip to the Dwarf's Mine, but was sent away before reaching it with a message for Lady Sybil. During his off nights, he works security shifts at the Royal Bank of Ankh-Morpork, where he appeared in making money apprehending whom he thought to be a would-be robber in the vault. His next appearance was in Unseen Academicals, where he found two of the main characters, Trevor Lightley and Mr. Nutt, in need of assistance after a football riot spilled over into a gang fight. In Snuff, Haddock is part of a diplomatic exchange program with the city-state of Quirm. Here, he is serving with the City Watch at the rank of acting captain. It is unclear if this is a reflection of Haddock's abilities per se, the esteem in which the Ankh-Morpork City Watch Summies are held, or simply a function of the exchange program itself. During these events, Commander Vims promises his awaited promotion to Sergeant if he can complete a vital task. Haddock does so, and Vims signs his promotion on the spot. After this point, Kipper Haddock's location and current duties are unknown. Luton Luton appears in the third Discworld computer game, Discworld Noir. Luton is the disc's first and only private investigator and a former member of the Ankh-Morpork City Watch, having been banished from it for taking a bribe. Luton was once a member of the Ankh-Morpork City Watch. Commander Sam Vims had a particular unexplained grudge against him. Luton met and fell in love with a female archaeologist named Ilsa and seemed to have a happy life. A particular moment fondly remembered was the Hotel Pseudopolis. Life seemed to be going well for Luton. However, one day, Ilsa left Ankhmore Pork for unexplained reasons and this drew Luton into a depression. He spent countless days drinking and drinking. During these hard times, Luton took a bribe which ended in him being permanently excluded from the watch. A few years later, Luton decided to pick himself up forget about Ilsa and the rest of his past and start a new life. He became a private investigator. However, he rarely got any cases. When Carlotta von Jorbewald came into his life, Luton's life changed forever. She gave him the Mundy case and although Luton didn't know it, she used him as a puppet in order to find Mundy. After discovering this they argued, and during this argument Carlotta kissed and bit Luton, turning him into a werewolf. Using his new wolf abilities, Luton managed to put a stop to Carlotta's cult's plans and save Ankhmore Pork from being consumed by a giant god of destruction. Equals former members equals. Findy Swing, Captain Swing as the head of the unmentionables in the Ankhmore Pork of the past in Night Watch. Swing is mainly remembered for his attempt to control crime by ordering all weapons confiscated, reasoning that this would result in a decline in crime figures. 
failing to acknowledge that criminals don't obey the law in the first place and would actually greatly enjoy the lack of weapons in society. He is described as a thin, balding man dressed in a long, old-fashioned black coat with large pockets, and supports himself on an opera cane. Swing moves and speaks in an erratic, jumpy fashion, in bursts, and sputters rather than a continuous flow of movement or sound. He is, however, a skilled swordsman, as he does not resort to flashy swashbuckling, but instead actually attacks his opponent. Swing always carries with him a large set of calipers and a steel ruler, with which he measures the facial characteristics of people he meets in order to determine their personal traits. Its reliability is questionable. According to it, Bims has the eye of a mass murderer, while Cass's only problem was his environment. He is killed by Vims during the fire at the Unmentionables headquarters. On arriving at the Great Desert he tries to use his phonological skills to determine Death's character, only to find that Death has no characteristics he can measure. The name Captain Swing has long been associated with civil unrest, being the pseudonym of the leader of the Swing Riots. Mayonnaise Quirk and the Day Watch, before the merging of the Watches, the Day Watch dealt with all crimes committed during daylight. The only significant Day Watch member mentioned is its captain, Mayonnaise Quirk, who first appears in Men at Arms. Quirk is nicknamed Mayonnaise by the Night Watch as he is rich, thick, oily, and smells faintly of eggs. In Night Watch he is revealed to be a little bit older than Vim's. He was originally a corporal in the Night Watch before kicked out by Sergeant at Arms John Keel. He joined the Day Watch shortly afterwards and presumably rose to the rank of captain at the same time as Vims did. During the events of Men at Arms, he is knocked out by Carrot, who tells his men to leave the city. Presumably, Quirk left with them. Allies. Equals 71 hour Ahmed equals, a Klochian warrior who accompanies the Klochian envoy Prince Kufura on a diplomatic journey to Ankh Pork in the novel Jingo. He speaks with a heavy accent and has a penchant for chewing on cloves. Following an attempt on the prince's life by an unknown assassin, he is suspected of killing the Watch's prime suspect, provoking Vims and other Watch members to pursue him back to Clotch. Apart from belonging to a vicious but honorable warrior clan known as the Dregs, he is later revealed to be the Wali of Clotch, a Clotchian equivalent of a Watchman on a par with Vims. It also turns out his obsessive clove chewing and broken maw porkian are in fact a disguise meant to delude foreigners into falsely assuming he is nothing but an uncivilized barbarian. Like many privileged foreigners, he was sent to the Assassin's Guild as a child on the assumption that he would get an excellent education. He confounds Vims by his fond memories of Ankhmore pork, and even cut me own throat dibbler. He and Vims eventually develop a wary respect for each other mostly based on both of them being basically honest cops in unenviable positions. He got his nickname after killing a man one hour before the end of the traditional dreg three days of hospitality, during which even your greatest enemy should be shown respect. Equals Willikins equals, butler to Commander Vims and Lady Sibyl, Willikins was in his youth a member of the Shimlega Street Rude Boys Street Gang where his weapon of choice was a cap brim sewn with sharp and pennies. In Night Watch it is revealed that he has been in the service of the Ramkin family for most of his life. His only absence from this employment was during the events in Jingo when he joined the army during the war against Clotch, during which he was known to alternate between violently yelling at his men for showing disrespect and then politely apologizing to Vims for their actions. It is implied, and almost certainly true, that he bit a man's nose off during the same war. He has proven himself more than once to be a skilled and ruthless fighter as well as a dutiful butler a Euro sometimes simultaneously, during the events of Thud. Willikins is surprised by a deep-down dwarf carrying a flamethrower entering the house illegally, and is forced to defend with the first thing that came to hand, the 18-inch long sharp serrated steel ice knife. He also lodged another dwarf on a meat hook. It is also revealed in Thud. That Willikins is a member of the special the Euro of the Ankhmore Pork City Militia. However, during the events of Snuff, Willikins goes to great lengths to avoid being involved with the local version of the Watch, claiming it went against his personal grain to be associated with the forces of law and order. Equals John Mossy Lawn equals, a doctor in Ankhmore Pork.
he first appeared in Night Watch, as a backstreet pox doctor, offering medical assistance to seamstresses. He had trained in Clarch, where he had learned techniques other more porkian surgeons distrusted, but which kept patients alive for longer than it took to pay the bill. He also gave free treatment to those who needed it, including those who had been tortured by the Cable Street particulars. He is quiet, if a tad sarcastic, and almost unshockable. Following his successful delivery of young Sam, Samuel Vimes gave him a large area of land in the Goosegate area of the city. In going postal this is the Lady Sybil Free Hospital. Dr. Lorne's preferred method of dealing with the nursing staff is to throw a handful of chocolates in one direction and run in the other as fast as possible. He claims that, when he dies, he wants a bell left on his gravestone so he can have the pleasure of not getting up when people ring. Notes References External links, Discworld and Pratchett Key